Hi and welcome to the IT Chronicles. I'm Kirsty McGowan and we're coming to you from the Gartner Data Centre Show in Las Vegas. I'm here with my co-host Charlie Betts. Kirsty. And today it's our pleasure to be chatting with Mark Tooley from Epsera. Hi Mark. Hi Kirsty. thank you. Thanks for having me. Now I understand you've got a presentation coming up tomorrow morning. Do you want to tell us a bit about what you're going to be talking yeah, about? Yeah, sure. It's uh, pretty exciting. I mean, uh, certainly exciting for us mm -hmm. and I think exciting for um, Rodan and Fields as well. Uh, 9.45 tomorrow, uh, Ralph Laura, the CTO for mm -hmm. Rodan and Fields and I, will be talking a little bit about uh, the experience that they've had um, using our tool to help them modernize uh, both legacy app modernization mm -hmm. and modernize from the perspective of actually running, managing at an enterprise, right. in an enterprise way, um, containers in the cloud, mm. right? Um, and so for us, it's, it's exciting in a number of ways, both in, in realizing the benefit we can have on what might be considered the boat anchor of IT, mm -hmm. legacy apps, but uh, also enabling companies to benefit from being able to build 12-factor right. apps mm. um, uh, from scratch or take those legacy apps and run them in containers as if they are, uh, almost right. as if they are cloud native. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Well, Mark, I think this is a great opportunity for uh, our viewers to hear a little bit about uh, containerization mm -hmm. and, you know, what does it actually bring you? You put yourself in the place of an INO manager, mm -hmm. and they've been hearing a little bit about Docker, but, you know, heck, Docker was only declared to be production ready recently. Right. So this stuff is all pretty new to people. I mean, what's the value proposition? What's in it for the data yeah. center manager? Well, without uh, um, getting all... Um professorial on you. Um, <laughs> containers have been actually been around for a while. Um, and, yeah. and they've been called different things in the past, but they were initially brought to fame within Google. And Google's actually been using them for years. Google probably used them in a big way for seven or eight years before they became famous and synonymous with the term Docker. Yeah. Right. Um, and you know, Docker is the big name in the industry right now, but the reality is, is that the benefit of containers isn't specifically around whether it's a Docker container, but rather around the capability of containers. And mm -hmm. containers offer a number of benefits for the user and the application. From a user perspective, containers provide some of the benefits that we struggled with in the VM space. Mm -hmm. In the VM space, there was no consistency of image, for instance. So moving just from your vSphere environment to a cloud mm -hmm. was problematic, let alone trying to move from one cloud to another, right? Just because mm -hmm. of right. image format, yeah. right. right? Networking was a problem, things like that. Um, so portability becomes a real opportunity with containers. Um, mm -hmm. It's also true that, um, as an example, we saved somewhere in the neighborhood of 75% of the resource utilization wow. from a, just a VM images for the modernized apps we did at uh, Rodan and Fields um, by putting them in containers. So mm -hmm. when you start thinking about scale, you start thinking yeah. about hundreds of apps in the cloud, uh, whether it's private cloud or public cloud, the ability to save that kind of resource, yeah. get yes, the flexibility yeah. of multi-cloud, and, and some of the other benefits that aren't necessarily important to every application, but become more and more important as you start thinking uh, microservices, as you start thinking of just-in-time um, service for IoT or whatever, right. the containers take on an even higher level of importance to the mm -hmm. customer because unlike a VM, a VM effectively is only a little bit better than a physical server. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's it's it's. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of benefits there, but right. from a performance standpoint, mm -hmm. a VM needs that time to boot up because it has mm -hmm. all of the Gosh. Windows files or all the yeah. Linux files. Yeah. It's got the whole image. The whole it's got to boot it all up, and so that that can take anywhere from many seconds to minutes, depending yeah. on yes. where it is and how yeah, big true. it is and, mm -hmm. and what it's loading. The container is is measured in microseconds. Right. right. So right. when you think about using a tool, for instance, let's say your um, email client mm -hmm. is based on containers right. mm -hmm. and you open up email and you have all your inbox mm -hmm. and you see on the side you see mm -hmm. the icons for your contacts and yeah. you see the icons for your folders etc mm -hmm. but you don't even realize mm -hmm. that when you click on the folder and it expands the folder that actually spun up a container right mm -hmm. and when right. you're not using the yep. folders anymore it spins mm -hmm. down the container so not only is it only mm -hmm. using the resource it needs for that job at that yep. point in time it only uses it for as long as you're actually using it very and cool. so, again, from mm -hmm. an efficiency standpoint, when you start thinking about scale, yeah. mm -hmm. and I think, uh, you know, one of the one of the struggles most of, uh, so I come from the buy side. That's mm -hmm. originally mm -hmm. where I did IT for almost Lots. 25 years. Right. Right? So I've only been on the dark side for the last six <laughs> years. Um, so, you know, when I think about mm -hmm. it, I think about the, the, the trends that are hitting IT today. And, and whether you're talking about IoT, whether you're talking about big data, you're talking about machine learning yep. and AI, uh, cognitive compute, facial recognition, mm -hmm. yep. you're talking about all these different areas of opportunity, 
any one of which, right. in theory, could do for IT what the internet did in the late 90s. Right. Yeah. Any yeah. one of them, yeah. let alone yeah. all of them. Absolutely. And I think uh, if you took any three or four of those trends we just yeah. talked about and related them to um, what businesses are actually hoping to get from them, it's a tighter relationship with the customer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you have a tighter relationship with the customer, what does that usually mean? That means more interaction with the customer. What does interaction mean today? Well, it certainly doesn't mean that you have 10,000 salespeople visiting your 10 million customers. No. Right. It means you have a lot more interaction digitally Digital. with your yes. customer. Yes. Well, if I have a thousand person company and I have IT supporting a thousand people, that's very different from taking that same IT footprint and supporting a hundred million people. Yep. Right. Even if each one of those external customers use 1% of right. what an internal yeah. customer would use from an IT load perspective, yes. mm -hmm. that's still an exponential increase in overall demand yeah. on IT. So mm -hmm. our ability to manage as efficiently as possible is really paramount to our ability yeah. to be successful going forward. Mm -hmm. what, what blades were to old servers, what, right. what VMs were to blades, mm -hmm. what containers are to VMs, right. all of those things are effectively minimum requirements right. for us to be able to service IT for the next five or six yeah. years. Yep. That's, that's all pretty exciting stuff. I mean, I think that whole that statistic of 75% resource saving, that's, right. that's quite mind-blowing, really. It's that's, huge. That's yeah. a huge saving when you, when you look at an enterprise saving that type of resource. Right. So, yeah. Especially if you're talking about something, you know, I mean, uh, Rodan and Fields is growing very <laughs> quickly, mm. but um, they're still relative. Imagine if they were mm. a 10 or $20 billion company with 30 mm. or 40,000 employees. Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden, that app alone adds up to millions in savings yes. on resources a year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, that's a key, and that's a, to, to get to your, uh, I think, one of your really interesting value propositions here. And by the way, that was a marvelous breakdown mm -hmm. of containers. Yeah, oh, thank it you. was. Thank it you. was yeah, very I'm good. I'm going to be pointing people <laughs> yeah. to that if they ask yep. me the questions. Yes. Um, okay, so they're, they're more consistent, they're more scalable, they're more yeah. efficient. Sounds great, but I've got all these old legacy apps, and yeah. I've heard through the grapevine mm -hmm. that I'm going to have to rewrite them all from scratch yeah. if I want to take advantage of this mm -hmm. great new right. unicorn right. world, but you're saying that that's not necessarily so. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, not, it's not magic. We can't do it for every yeah. app, mm -hmm. right? Um, but uh, what we've found is that for almost any Linux-based VM, mm -hmm. uh, within anywhere from an hour or two to maybe a day or two, mm -hmm. we can take the simplest to the most complex yeah. apps, modernize them, and put them in our uh, platform. Once they're in our platform, several kind of almost magical things yeah. actually occur. They're actually more secure than they were when they were in your data center, right? Mm -hmm. right? Just yeah. running in vSphere, just running in OpenStack, mm -hmm. whatever you had them running. They're actually more secure in our platform mm -hmm. after the move. They're now using less resource than they yeah. were using before. They can be put on any cloud mm -hmm. and they can be moved between any cloud. Mm -hmm. So if you think about what most people are doing today relative to modernization, it's, it's what I euphemistically call brute forcing, yeah. right? It's where this is the app, we need to get it into the cloud in three months or two months or a month, whatever it is, how many people do we have to throw at it to refactor it and put it into the cloud? Um, some of the reasons for refactoring are to get benefits that are inherent with broad scale cloud use for an application, right? Uh, uh, ultimate uh, um, flexibility, elasticity, geo distribution yep. maybe, uh, maybe the ability to actually run the app live in more than one location. Right. Yep. That's a true refactoring of the app, as it right. were. But if you could get 60 or 80% of those benefits, right. spending 10 or 15% of the time to do it, all of a sudden mm -hmm. hundreds of new apps become opportunities to give the IT owner mm -hmm. flexibility of how they use their existing yep. space, yep. right? Or, I mean, uh, to use some of Gartner's own numbers from the past, IBM's numbers, IDC's numbers, mm -hmm. sorry to mention a competitor, mm -hmm. but um, most IT organizations are somewhere between 75 and 90% keep the lights on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do they spend time actually devoting mm -hmm. energy to cloud native apps yeah. or innovation in the cloud, exactly. innovation in delivering for customers, if they're spending all their money mm -hmm. keeping old apps burning? Yeah. Yep. Right. So, now, if they can reduce that overhead by twenty or thirty percent, they free up the. Uh, they free up an immense amount of resource, not only in money but in people, yeah. to address yeah. new opportunity. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Oh, thank you. I have a far better understanding of containerization <laughs> now than I did ten minutes ago. So, thank well, you for that. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks for having me. Very good.